And I'm standing in the Erie City Cemetery. It's uh, one of the largest cemeteries in this part of Pennsylvania. It's the final resting place for over 50,000 people. It was opened in 1851. It sits on 75 beautiful acres here in the heart of Erie, uh, up near Lake Erie, uh, nestled right in between Ohio and New York in that little panhandle of Pennsylvania that sticks up. And while you won't find any titans of history here, nobody that um, most people are going to be aware of. If you're a student of history, there are some familiar names here, some people of note, and I want to show you some of those today. Uh, there are uh, Civil War officers. There are Medal of Honor recipients from at least three different wars. There are congressmen. There are a lot of people who had an impact on American history, and I want to try and find just a few of those and talk about them. So let's take a look. Well, there's probably no more famous grave in this cemetery than the one that I'm standing at now, which I'll give you a better look at in a minute. This is the grave of Union Brigadier General Strong Vincent. Strong Vincent was born in Waterford, which is here in Erie County. He eventually uh, went to Trinity College and then to Harvard, where he graduated and came back to practice law here in Erie. When the American Civil War broke out in 1861, he answered, answered his country's call and very quickly rose to become the colonel and commanding officer of the 83rd Pennsylvania. Uh, not long after that, he was promoted yet again, became a brigade commander in the 5th Corps of the Union Army of the Potomac. And at the age of 26, he led that brigade up Little Round Top on July 2nd, 1863, where he gave instructions to one of his newly pr uh, promoted officers. Uh, who had just come to command of the 20th Maine Infantry, and that was uh, Colonel Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. He told Chamberlain that he was the end of the line. He was the extreme left flank of the entire Union Army and that he had to hold at all costs. It was those instructions by Colonel Strong Vincent that led Chamberlain into his heroic actions, along with the heroic actions of his men, in saving the day at Little Round Top. But it wasn't just the 20th Maine, it was Vincent's entire brigade who had a big part to play, and it was in no small part to the heroism of their commanding officer. For his actions that day, Strong Vincent was posthumously promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. He never lived to see it because he was mortally wounded on Little Round Top that day. He survived for five days, but died of his wounds, and he was brought back here to Erie to be buried. And just kind of a personal note, uh, to be honest, as I have studied Strong Vincent, and I don't know a lot about him, but I, uh, having been a student of the Battle of Gettysburg, I've been well aware of his uh, part that he played that day. I've seen the monument to the 83rd Pennsylvania, which has Strong Vincent's face on it. Um, but uh, honestly, it was when I came to the cemetery here today that I got a glimpse of the man and it almost kind of put me in tears because I'd only thought of him as a historical figure not as a husband and certainly not as a father because buried right next to strong Vincent is his daughter Blanche that I'm guessing he never got to meet she was born in 1863 I don't know when I just see the date she passed away in 1864 and was reunited with her father her name was Blanche strong Vincent and she's buried in between her mom and her dad her mother uh, who is buried on the other side, lived until 1914. She out, outlived her husband by 51 years. And I never knew that the name Strong was anything more than just a really creative first name. It appears that it's actually a family name because in the Vincent plot, which circles this cross in the center, there are actually Strong family members. So I'm guessing it must have been Strong Vincent's mother or some other family member who had the maiden name Strong and led to him receiving that excellent name for a Civil War officer. But I'll give you a better look at the strong plot here in Erie Cemetery.
another hero of the 83rd Pennsylvania is buried here in Erie as well, and that is Colonel John W. McLean. Uh, in addition to having a really cool name, the same name as Bruce Willis's character in the Die Hard series, uh, John McLean had a storied history in his own right. Uh, before the war broke out, the Civil War broke out, he was the sheriff of Erie County. And when the war broke out, he very quickly went to work helping raise a regiment of soldiers uh, to answer President Lincoln's call for volunteers. He did so and became the colonel of that unit. Well, that unit only served for a short time. It was disbanded, but he raised another unit of soldiers. He became the colonel of that regiment. His lieutenant colonel was Strong Vincent who would later take his place and command of the 83rd uh, Pennsylvania. And he would go on to lead the regiment through countless battles. Eventually, he was on the very end of the Union line at the Battle of Gaines Mill during the Peninsula Campaign in 1862. And it was there as he went up against a Confederate regiment toe-to-toe -to -toe, that uh, late in the battle, uh, he was shot through the heart and killed instantly on the battlefield at Gaines Mill. He was buried on the battlefield. Eventually, he was exhumed and brought back here to Erie where he was buried. And he continues to be honored today. Uh, I believe in the 1960s, the Pennsylvania General Assembly posthumously promoted uh, Colonel McLean to the rank of Brigadier General, though his grave does still say Colonel. Uh, in addition to that, there is a high school named after him. Uh, just like there was a high school named after Strong Vincent, it's now the middle school uh, here in Erie. Uh, so they do continue to remember these men who had such an impact on the American Civil War. The 83rd Pennsylvania, uh, by the way, was one of the highest uh, casualty-taking regiments of the entire American Civil War. It's believed that only the 5th New Hampshire lost more men killed and wounded in action during the American Civil War than the 83rd Pennsylvania did. She was in all of the major uh, fights uh, during the Eastern uh, series of battles in the Civil War and she created a very uh, storied history for herself. Uh, all men uh, from Northwest Pennsylvania, Mercer, Erie, Crawford, some of the other counties in this area, uh, but the grave of John McLean and his family, I'll show you a closer look. Once you enter the cemetery and begin to drive around, you'll notice there are a lot of prominent markers, but there are a few that are more prominent than the one behind me. And I'll kind of tip up. You can see how very large it is. That's the Reed Family Monument. And then encircling it, you can see these graves that go all the way around. Some of them are beautiful, very ornate. Uh, and they start with a grave in the 1700s and go all the way up to the year 2000. All the same family, which is really, really cool to see that legacy. But I want to point out one in particular, and that's this grave right here. And that is the grave of Colonel Seth Reed, who died in 1797. I'm venturing to guess that is not a 1797 monument, so it's been placed there uh, in the intervening years. But Colonel Seth Reed was one of the original settlers of Erie, Pennsylvania. He was a Revolutionary War officer, he actually fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill, among other places, and he was kind of the beginning of generations of reeds in this cemetery. One of the other prominent graves that I'll try to find for you later, if I'm able to, is the grave of Sarah Reed. Uh, who was prominent, and uh, you can see her name all over Erie today. Uh, she uh, was very concerned with the welfare of what we would today call at-risk children, and she dedicated her life to making their lives better. And her legacy exists even to this day, even though she died nearly 100 years ago. And when you go to the Find a Grave site, uh, or, to, or to the website of the cemetery, uh, she is one of the three most prominent people that they mention on their front page of their cemetery as being buried here. So we'll try to find Sarah's grave as we're out and exploring.
Not everyone in this cemetery has some note in American history, but every one of these 50,000 people lived a life, whether short or long. Every one of them impacted someone, was loved by someone, loved people. Um, some people just did their duty and did it well. Right here, I just have a man uh, who was a firefighter. I don't know a thing about him other than what's on his tombstone and that he served his community by serving as a firefighter. There are some other graves up here that I wanted to show you, and, and they're not anybody of any historical note. I just really thought uh, that the way that they were honored on their gravestones was really remarkable, and it's not something I see very often, and I'm in cemeteries all over the place. I want to show you that real quick, and it's very close. It's actually just over the hill, maybe 200 feet from where the Vincent graves are, so let's take a look. I take that back. Honestly, it's more like 50 feet from where the Vincent graves are. Uh, it's the Metcalf family, and I don't know anything about this family other than what I see on these stones, but uh, these were people who were loved, and you get a sense of that by looking at these graves. And I just want, I thought it would be cool just to honor some regular people, people who were loved, people who loved. Uh, here was a man who was a patriot, he was a soldier, he served his country, he served his family. They obviously loved history. You can see the Daughters of the American Revolution markers. These were people who understood who they were and where they came from. And I think it's really cool that so many of these families are together. I, I don't know that I've ever seen one cemetery that had so many uh, plots where 150 or 200 years of one family are all in one place. It's really remarkable. And if you look around, you just see it's everywhere. There's one there. Right here's the Vincent graves that I showed you earlier. They're all these central markers surrounded by entire families. And the dates go from the 1700s to the 2000s. It's really, really cool. If you ever get the chance to visit Erie Cemetery, it's definitely worth your time. Well, for the last grave that I wanted to share with you, unfortunately, I couldn't find it. And I'm in the section that I'm told is where he is buried. And it's section 10A, but try as I might, as I searched, I couldn't find the grave. It's the grave of Samuel the Jet Jethro. Now, Sam Jethro was a uh, center fielder in, uh, for the Cleveland Buckeyes of the Negro Leagues in the 1940s. He uh, won multiple batting titles uh, with that organization. He uh, batted 340 over his career. Once the color barrier was broken, he got his opportunity with the Boston Braves in the major leagues. And at the age of 32, became the oldest recipient of the Rookie of the Year award uh, in his rookie season with the Boston Braves. He actually um, was able to succeed even in that late stage of his career. Uh, twice, I believe, led the National League in stolen bases and uh, just had a wonderful career as a center fielder. Uh, he died in the uh, year 2001. He's buried with several members of his family. I'll put up a picture so you can at least see a picture of his grave. I'm sorry I wasn't able to locate it. Uh, but there's so much more here. There are congressmen. There are Medal of Honor winners, as I mentioned at the beginning. I just didn't have time to explore such a large cemetery. But if you ever are in Erie, Pennsylvania, please check it out. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again soon.